two teachers, two totally different working environments. Understanding algebra can make the difference between life and death in the Navy and between pass or failure in your GCSE. Does anybody have any idea what we're trying to do here? Can a mainstream teacher learn a thing or two from their military counterpart? Could some Navy rigor help them in the classroom? HMS Collingwood in Portsmouth is the largest naval training base in Europe with over 3,000 trainees. Maths underpins everything in the Navy, whether it's engineering, navigation, radar or weapon systems. It's Lieutenant Peter Irahiman's task to teach maths to the Navy's trainee engineers, many of whom find it a struggle. Known by students as the Maths Ninja, Peter has three weeks to turn them from white to blue belt mathematicians. Some of the trainees that we get have joined the Navy primarily because they don't want to do maths or they didn't want to go down the academic route. And you can see that big surprise look in their face, like, oh my God, I thought I'd escaped this. I've not been to school since 15 years. And they said, oh, you'll be doing algebraic fractions. I'm like, eh, what's that? <laughs> Despite the challenging starting point, Peter gets results. Do we understand the meaning of coefficient? Have we mentioned it this morning? Peter's real strength, I think, is his passion for, for teaching, for a start. And he will try and find any way he can, I think, to, to, to make it more fun to learn mathematics as he goes. He's not like, you know, the teacher. So, like, when you work, and you say involve teamwork, he's, like, in there, you know, and he is part of the team. You've got to start building this relationship with Mars, haven't you? From the day one, we start building that culture of, you know, understanding it in depth, you know, understanding why you're doing it, because in the business that we're in, if you make a mistake, it could cost lives. Falmer High School in Brighton is committed to boosting performance in maths. All right, thank you. Have a look at the board. The new head of department, Peps McRae, has set himself the challenge of getting over 35% of his students a grade C or above at GCSE. Right, hold on a second. I can still hear some sort of music being played. But it's a tough call trying to motivate these year 11s. A lot of them are actually quite able and should be able to do maths, but they don't really see the point. Um, and that, I think that comes down to the, the fact that they don't have a job in mind. So for them, it's difficult to see the point of education in a lot of cases, and maths is just the one that sticks out the most. It's just really quite pointless. I'm never going to use it in my life. It's a bit boring, to be honest with you, but <laughs> I don't think you really, anyone really needs it for later on in life. Elvis Presley could come along and, and dance along to uh, algebra, and it wouldn't be fun at all, still. It, it, it's boredom personified. We've got students who definitely can do it, but are just not interested. And no matter how hard I try and all the strategies I seem to, to bring out, it just doesn't have an effect. OK, I want you to get a good grade in your GCSEs. I'm doing it. I wrote it down on it. When it comes down to it, um, I've got a group of students who I need to get a C. The clock's ticking, and we've got about four or five weeks left before GCSEs, so I need some inspiration. Can a day with the Royal Navy inspire Peps and his students about the relevance of quadratic equations? Peter, ah, nice to meet you. Welcome on board HMS Collingwood. The visit begins with the morning muster. It gives Peps a taste of the way things are done in the Navy. March, left, right. As the trainees go to their classes, Peter talks about how he motivates his own reluctant students. You've got to get them to trust you and you've got to get them to want to work hard for you. I say to a lot of them, you know, you've got to start treating your relationship with Mars the way you treat your relationship with your friend, the way you treat your relationship with your girlfriend. <laughs> it sounds funny, but it does send a message home to say, how long have you not done Mars, friend? Some of them say a couple of months, some say a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, exactly, you know, if you turned up in Edinburgh just now and, and saw your girlfriend from school, yeah. you know, you wouldn't expect her to cook your meal straight away yeah. and be happy to see you. It's exactly the same with Matt. You've got to start putting in that time again. You've got to win it over, you know, it's not just going to come back to you naturally. 5x plus 4 into minus 1. Peps joins a class of trainee engineers for some simultaneous equations. So, yep, that's one point you picked up straight away. You owe one, you've got one. How do you get zero out of that? Put them together, which is what you did. So, well done. Crack on. 
So what, I'm quite interested to see what these bits you get angry at. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just. Uh, yeah, that's just, I was square rooting the wrong thing, oh, okay. so I just get angry. <laughs> <laughs> I got it in the end though, so that's all right. Yeah. These trainees are learning maths eight hours a day for three weeks. How does it compare to maths at school? I couldn't see like algebra helping me in any way, so straight away I just put up this barrier and thought, well, I'm not going to learn it, I'm, I'm not interested. But we all know we have to do it. It is just a positive attitude, and at the end of the road, you know, it's for your career and it's more money and it's you get promoted so what else is different from the environment here compared to when you're at school some teachers not all but at school some can appear like you know I suppose like either condescending or patronizing whichever way you want to put it that's when you get the attitude which whereas here you feel that you're taking oh, well, very you're seriously to equally yeah. I mean apart from calling sir sir the, I, I think the rings come off and the, the, we're all the it's, same it's here, trying to learn. in the class with the officer this teaching is because it's not just teaching you constantly maths it, he breaks it and then cracks some jokes, which it mellows you a bit rather than being pure stressed, just worrying about numbers, trying to do the sums and that, right? But if he cracks a few jokes, then you calm yourself down. I was just talking to one of the trainees at the back of the classroom, and there was a page where he just got his pen and just been really angry that he couldn't do it. But he didn't give up. How, how do you achieve that sort of high expectations, high standards. Our system in the society today is, you know, you go to primary school, you go to secondary school, you just train, train, educate, educate, educate. And some of them feel like, you know, I'm just on a conveyor belt, really. No one really cares, you know. But I try to break that barrier and say, well, you're wrong, because I do care. Because I, in my head, I'm thinking, if you fail, I failed, you know. So it's almost like they owe it to me because they know I put in a lot of hard work, you know, and they don't want to let me down. I'll use that. I can see myself standing up and saying, right, guys, uh -huh. if you feel, I'll feel that. After three weeks of maths, Peter's trainees are ready for some action. Check safety at GPMG bearing green at 9 at 0. S1 weapon may fire. Check. The Navy uses a system of blended learning. Trainees immediately get to apply their maths in practical situations. Check, check, check. Boys, what's the muzzle velocity then, guys? What speed will the bullets travel at? 2,700 feet per second. Feet per second. Feet per second, yeah. Peter works closely with the other instructors. And do they remember what they've learned in the classroom and apply it in there? Well, a good point, a good part of it is because it's so blended, because it's... Um, we apply everything that we teach them, the mathematics side, mm -hmm. straight into a scenario. We hope that retention um, gets in there much more than it would with just given, let's say, a PowerPoint display or just going through a sum. Check, check, check. And so it's not just a case of pulling the trigger and, and off we go, bang, bang. EP tank, wait a little bit, a minute, one seven, in one and a half minutes time. Next stop is the Navy's driving school, a state-of-the-art bridge simulator. Zero two two. Everything you hear now is maths. Uh, these guys are learning how to drive a frigate size uh, ship out of Portsmouth, three and a half thousand tons, and you've, you've been watching it for the last few minutes, and you can notice the number of numbers they're using. They're doing multiplication in their heads, um, division in their heads, and they're using the sign tables in their heads as well. So there's no calculators? There's no calculators on the bridge. So that you've he's just been told to rework out the ETA, the estimated time of arrival at the anchorage. So he was doing it all in his head now, as and when he's got spare capacity. So it requires a complex mental agility. It is, but there's all sorts of tips of the trade that we use okay. to make to make it easy. The Navy has a training ship in Portsmouth, HMS Bristol. Peps will be meeting some recent recruits who are getting their first experience of life on board. Here, they learn basic electrical principles. Have you, have you had to do much maths in the Navy? Some of the calculations you use, like Ohm's Law. OK. Um, so it's a refresher for people like me. Um, some already know it, so the maths is good. Peps is interested in the kind of feedback Peter gives his trainees to see how it compares with his own approach. When you join any division, they explain to you what your terms of reference are and what you're going to get measured against, against at the end of the, uh, end of the year. And what sort of you know, things are that? One of those boxes will be your academics. Yeah. The other boxes will include leadership and communication and physical courage and moral courage, that sort of thing. And you're, you know, it might be that this education system in schools at the minute it lacks the other eight boxes. I think a lot of youngsters are in school just think, 
well, I'll just turn up, you know, if I'm gifted. I don't have yeah. to, you know, I don't have to be give, show any good attitude or character. They you don't know. see the bigger picture. E exactly. Yeah. You know, whereas here, they know that part of their objective, you know, means, you know, I've got to do well academically, I've got to demonstrate good judgment, I've got to show that I'm capable. And the incentive then for the student not, becomes not just an academic qualification, exactly. but a, a certain sense that other people can rely life on them. Skills. That they, life skills. Yeah, that That's they can lead people because, through difficult situations exactly. and they can respond under pressure. Yeah. Yeah. One skill they all learn is finding their way around a ship. What is the fire main pressure in 3J? What is the fire main pressure? We so have to find 3J. We have to find 3J. Some of these recruits are not much older than Pepsi's year 11s. This is what you want, the fire hydrant. How do they respond to the Navy's candid feedback? If you're not putting the effort in, they'll tell you straight and they'll tell you to... Fuck up your ideas. Yeah, basically. It's a more polite way of putting it. Does, that, does it work? Does it? Yeah. Definitely, yeah. If you had one piece of advice to offer me, um, that I could take back to my classroom and, uh, and sort of help motivate my students, what would it be? If you could show them what, what they're going to be doing with their maths or something like that, I that think would, it would help. That would help a lot. Yeah. Doing all these circuits, yeah. and you see it on a piece of paper and it's quite confusing. When you build it and then you see it actually working, it's just it's clear. It's you black and white. Yeah, yeah it's really? a lot easier. Pepsi's short tour in the Navy is almost over. To begin with, it appears your trainees believe that they're working hard for a promotion. But yes, I, I'm confident there's a, there's another reason in there, and it's and it's about the whole Navy ethos. Uh -huh. And that the real reason I believe is yeah. because they want to do themselves proud, yep. do the best, the very best they can yep. in everything they do. I completely agree. And that comes from the message yeah. that you sent them. It comes from you being a great role model. Yeah. And everybody working exactly. and supporting each other. I completely agree. It's about doing well for yourself, you know, and not letting the side down at the end of the day. You know, you want to be part of that team that succeeds. Yeah. A week later, back at Falmer, Peps is keen to try some new ideas on his unmotivated Year 11s. I felt really inspired, and I've had just a, a constant stream of ideas running through my brain since. Uh, at the start of the lesson, I have an instruction board, and it just says, to be treated with maturity and respect. You can start by giving out each other's books, by taking off your jackets and hoodies without being asked. Really simple things, but it's, it, it's great to just be reminded of the, the sort of high expectations that can be set about smaller details. Fab, okay, so the one that's in here is called North Northeast. One of the other aspects I picked up was the, the candid feedback that was given by Peter. He gave me feedback, he said that my coursework was way below standard in no uncertain terms and, you know, I gave it a little go, got the, got the basic grade I needed, like I see, and, you know, so that kind of works. I have been trying to inject a little bit more humour uh, into my lessons. Half the sum of the parallel sides times the distance between them. That's how we calculate the area of a trapezium. Oh my God. <laughs> He's come back with a lot more uh, sort of ideas and a lot more answers because I always ask him every lesson, what's the point? And he's come back with a lot more answers, so he's, he's, he's become unbeatable, so now I've just got to work. With a few months left before they take their exams, it would be really interesting to see what impact this has. I'll also be hoping that they leave school and leave my classroom uh, with higher expectations and higher standards of themselves and others, feeling more confident that they can, they can do things.